In this week's episode, we spend some time with Western Province Blitz head coach Saleh Nakadin at Newlands Cricket Ground. We also interview newly appointed physiotherapist Mohamed Sande. The VP Blitz teams shows us what it takes to play cricket at the top level with intense training. I end the day off with some fun at the crease as I live out my Newlands batting experience. South Africa is a sport-loving nation. Next to rugby and soccer, cricket is probably our favorite pastime. Today I'll be spending time with the Western Province Blitz team as they prepare for the tournament up in Potchefstroom. We'll also be spending time with the head coach, Salih Nakadin, and speaking to him about his journey as a player and now as coach of this prestigious team representing the Western Cape. Western Province Blitz is a team representing Western Cape Province in domestic first-class cricket in South Africa. The team began playing in January 1890 and its main venue has always been Newlands in Cape Town. Under the reorganization of professional South African cricket in the 1990s and more recently Western Province joined with Boerland to form the side that now plays in the Supersport series under the name Cape Cobras and divides its time between Newlands and the Boerland Park ground in Paul. Western Province still competes under its provincial name in the UCB Province series. VP Blitz head coach Mohamed Saleh Nakadin, born 19th of July 1963, is a South African cricketer from Paul. He was a left-handed batsman and bowled right-arm medium. He represented Borland in first class and list A cricket. He made his first class debut in 1983-84 season and almost three years later he played list A for Borland. Brookie wants to say a couple of words um, and then I will obviously introduce you to the new physio. And just uh, with regards to the layout of the of the, the practice session for today and, and obviously tomorrow, I think it's very important what we want to, to achieve. And then uh, obviously leave on, on, on Friday. Um, next guys, I just want to introduce to you our new physio, uh, Mohamed Sonday. Um, from Cape Town. I think we went through a, a thorough um, interview process um, and obviously that came in obviously from a, a point system that he was the best candidate for the job. He's got a uh, cricket background um, and um, Mohammed, I think what you see around this table is a lot of young players and also some senior players in the setup that knows this place very well. It's a management here that's been around here for quite a long time as well. And whatever you need assistance from our side, um, from the player's side, and I think the players will give everything from their side to, to make your life uh, uh, much more easier. And don't be shy to, to, to talk when there's need to be, you know, discussions around uh, some serious issues regarding players. Uh, so welcome and, and, and really settle in nicely and obviously your first day and uh, we're looking forward uh, to you this uh, working with you this season as well. Welcome. Uh, Peto, welcome back. Welcome back. Nice to have you back, fella. <laughs> It's been, I can say it's, it's been what, uh, more than was it 10 years, 12 years, we started the journey together. Some of you, the faces around this table, um, actually it's like a, a full circle coming together, being around, starting your careers uh, in the setup. And it's nice to obviously sort of working with you guys again. I think this is a nice bunch of, uh, a nice squad that we've uh, assembled and, and that we contracted, a talented squad but also that we all need to understand this. We can, we can have talent, but we need to put all those talent out there in the middle. I think it's important that we understand as professional cricketers and uh, players and management that we all needed something that we want to work towards to. And if we channel our energies in the right direction, as I always say, 
there will be issues along the line, but if we channel our energy in the right direction, we're going to achieve something very special. But be as it may, in terms of where we now is, guys, is we've got a T20 tournament that we need to attend to or to go and play for two and a half weeks. What I would like to say is that we've heard about where we're going to play, where we're going to stay. Claire's door. All I want to say is that we need to embrace this challenge. Okay? We don't, like I said last season, there was no mounds and grounds where we stayed in the bubble, whatever the case might be, and where we practice at uh, Western Prance Club. The, the, the facilities might not be so, so uh, like at Newlands, uh, Ronda Boss Cricket Club. Nobody mounted. There was no grounds, mounds and grounds. That was a good, uh, that was a good sign. And that's how we turned that season around. Okay, to where we now. So once again, Claire's door is Claire's door. So we're gonna travel and we're gonna practice and we come back and we're gonna have meetings and we're gonna plan and we're gonna play. So we're gonna play on nice weekends there, but also weekends that can maybe go slightly different uh, as the, towards the end of the, the tournament. But we need to understand that with that comes also selection uh, challenges. So with selection challenges in terms of how we're going to put the side together for that right for that conditions is very key. Like I said last week, we all need to buy into this in terms of our selection policies. How are we going to put a, a team together with the management and, and the captain and vice captain on this trip? I think we don't have a convener of selectors yet, guys. There might not be a big convener of selectors for the season that I think maybe it might be a good thing. But uh, yeah, it, it makes life so much easier when we work together as a unit. So we understand as management, myself, as, as heading up this, uh, this team, what we need. We will make mistakes at the end of the day. We'll make uh, decisions that might not be the right ones, but we, all, we also will make decisions that's, that's good for the team. But I need, and, and once again, we need good, good attitudes, good characters in this, 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 this squad going forward. You know, and, and that is for me key, guys. In, for, for us to succeed is what we, what we put out there on and off the field. When, we come to your, when you come to your workplace, you give 120%. When you go back to your family, you give time to them as well. So the balance is very key. The balance is very key in terms of your own performances as a team and your individual performances. So if we can manage that properly, guys, we're going to win. We're going to win something very special. When it comes to your own sort of form, when there's a dip, make sure you don't doubt your, your preparation. What you have done over the last four months, if it's indoors or overseas, make sure that you, when you refer back to what you did, did nicely. How did you get out of that? That dark spaces will come to each and every one of us. I guarantee you that. That's how cricket tells you. And if we can help each other out of that dark spaces, we're going to make sure that we're going to move and we're going to win some, something special. So make sure that we always, there will be some guys, management, myself included, that might not be in a good space at a period of time during a season. We need to monitor that. We all need to monitor. It's not just our responsibility. We all need to monitor the system. So if we all monitor the system, we're going to see the, the, the benefits. All right, but like I said, the class of issue, we go down there, guys, we're gonna give it our 120%. I'm fully committed towards a successful tournament there. And the guys that have been selected, all the best of luck as well. With a prep year for two days, three days, and at, uh, at um, POTS, there's still time, still time left. So make sure that we all channel our energy in the right direction and our mindsets so that we can move and, 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 and practice appropriately. Um, in terms of the injuries, obviously Jono is uh, got a hamstring again, so he's out. I'm not sure how long. Um, um, Muhammad, that's your first assignment, um, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so Ethan is coming in. Um, Eddie will be on the non-traveling re um, reserve list. So anything, guys, like I said the other day, anything can happen very quickly. Before first game, Yes, it already happened with Jono. Before our first game, another thing can happen. You just never know. It could be in our first game as well. So make sure that we we practice and we practice properly and make sure that our head space is in the right directions. Like I said, channel the energies as positive as, possi as, as, as possible, you know. 
So don't make, don't get into to spaces where you doubt certain things and you doubt your ability, you doubt what you've done for for for, for three months. So when your your opportunity comes, you must be ready and and fit in immediately. Okay, so switch on immediately. That's all I'm asking. Um, and then just a guys, I think operational principles for me for success. I think just this is a couple of things that I feel this that you keep in mind in terms of leading up to now to the tournament. I think number one, you all did, you all heard about the, the confidence. Totally composed when we do things, especially when you your prep work. You be composed in what you're doing. Obviously, in when it comes to the the, the match situation, very important the confidence that we put, portray. Not just when we uh, pre, do prep work, but when we that to, when when we toss and we're ready to play in 10 minutes time or an hour's time. Are we ready? Is that confidence still the same level of energies, or is it going another level up? The other thing is desire. The desire for me and the motivation to win. We did that in the second half of the season. The way we turned it around and the way we showed the brand of cricket we played and how we played it, how we got out of difficult situation to win a game. Not thinking about the semi-final, but the way we were leading up, we, the way we played the second half right through that T20 competition. The big thing, guys, is for me, once again, you, you all heard it, it's self-belief. And self-belief says a hell of a thing. If you don't have self-belief, awareness of your own ability, then you're going to struggle. So make sure that all these things that I've just mentioned, clarity of strategy, clarity of your own game plan. If you still worry about certain avenues of your game plan in T20 cricket, let's talk about it as soon as possible. If there are certain areas of the game that you still uh, doubt, Doubt your ability of a game plan in a one day and or a T20 game. Make sure that you, you speak to the relevant people. Come and speak to me, whoever you want to speak to. Don't be shy to come and do that. Because at the end of the day, make sure that you're in the middle there. The two of you has got to take control and, and govern that space when you're in there in the middle. We're sitting outside. We can't control what's happening in there. The two that's in there, the two bowlers that might bowl, they control, they need to know, understand what they need to go and do. The same applies for, 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 for batters, guys. So clarity and strategy has got to be clear. Mm -hmm. Commitment, I can't fault. For the eight months, 10 months that I've been here, I can't fault commitment. And we don't want to do that. We want to improve our commitment in terms of that. All of you sitting around the table, that's not your best, that's not part of this squad anymore. Commitment is fantastic. All right? so, so, uh, through difficulty, through the um, venues that we played and practice that wasn't good enough, we showed that sort of uh, commitment as well. The last two is patience. Patience in terms of what we're doing, in terms of how the game is going, how our season is going. Might we have a dip? What patience are we going to portray in terms of our practices when we come to practice? How are we going to handle it at, 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 at when you're back at home? How are you treating your family if things are not going right in your workplace? How that balance I need to have, that patience you need to have. For me as somebody sitting here that need to have, that, uh, have a mandate, I need to have patience to make sure that whatever we do, we, we back this, what we're doing. And whatever we need to can do better, you are the guys that say, guys, through the captain, can we do maybe that one, two, and three better? Can we, can we add that to that? We open for that. So I have the patience in terms of what we're doing and what we try to do going forward for the season. So I have the patience in terms of what we're doing and what we try to do going forward for the season. And for me, not rush into things, guys. When it's game day, don't rush into things. You have your time. You know how, how you want to operate in your, in your space to get yourself ready for the game. From the hotel to the venue, at the ground, how do you manage your own time? 
that's the type of patience you need to show and the consistency you need to show in terms of how you're going about your, your daily routines. And the last, last one basically is positive thinking all the time. If we're positive in all in things that we do, although it's, we're losing as well, we're going to lose games. This is the nature of the beast. We're going to lose games as well. But we need to stay positive in what we're doing. In terms of prep work, in terms of whatever we do, how we speak to people, and how we uh, um, um, handle a, a negative um, remark from outside, from media, if things are not going right, you still talk positive about this environment. Not put a, not put a, 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 a like I said, a, a cover around this team to say, no, everything is hunky dory. If there's some, something wrong, guys, we're not happy, then we speak out. That's how I want to see this, this environment grow. If it's with the captain, myself, or with the management, oh, this is how I want to see this environment grow. And if we do that on a regular basis, check in with each and every one, then you will see where are we going to go. This is not the place for us to just to sit on people. This is not my nature. And I don't think this is our nature as a management. But when there's a time and a place for it, we'll do that and have that stern talk. But most of the time, we want to we wanna talk uh, solution driven uh, chats. We want to talk about solutions. If you've got something to do with your technical side of it, don't overthink. Keep it as simple as possible. So make sure that all these things, the seven points that we keep that in mind. Make a note of it. You remind yourself every day, listen, where am I currently with my own game? What can I do better? How can I improve? Make it difficult for us. And I think there's one person around this table that said to me, make it difficult for me, for you coach, to, to not select me. That's the type of mentality I want to see from each and every one. It's going to be tough to select sides this coming season. And we open an honest here in terms of it. So this is, I like this type of way of have tough selection calls to, to make. We're going to have tough discussions when you're not playing. Why are you not playing? That's the openness that we want to have in this uh, environment. So guys, from my side, this just from a couple of things that I just before we start our prep and, and going into the T20 campaign when we leave on Friday. And then just objectives for, for our sessions here today. Uh, we're going to have a similar one tomorrow as well. Um, so I would like to have the guys in, the, in their position. I think Tony, when you're not batting, um, obviously control on the field. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got the schedule, who's fitting in where. There is nets at the back. So we will do a rotation of, 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 of batters as well to do some uh, specific skills that you need to do. But we need to have 11 fielders uh, regularly on the field. Okay, so um, that's basically the objectives, guys, for this thingy for these two days, it's important that we, we can see, we can uh, assess the wicket and we can then say, listen, what is a good score on this wicket? What is a good score? So we say, all right, it's, it's 170 good score. All right, out, out of that 20 odd overs, we want to see if we're going to get to, in the different stages, we want to see if we're going to get to, to 170. We need also need to realize, guys, when to uh, uh, um, assess a good wicket, when it's a, when we, uh, the two batters, when it's a 200 wicket, when it's a sort of a sort of a average wicket, say 160 plus 170 wicket, and when it's a really sort of a very difficult wicket, where it's say 140 will be might be a winning score, but we scrape scrape to maybe 150. So that's assessments we need to look as well that objective for today. Okay, what is a good score here on this wicket on this deck? So we'll obviously have the sheets uh, around to to see what the power play looks like, and there's two middle periods as well as the death period. But also, if there's a bit of time, guys, maybe uh, the rows, I think maybe uh, maybe a super over, uh, maybe two sets, just quickly, if there's time. If you look at two hours, it gives you like two uh, hour and 20 minutes. Um, but also, time-wise, I want to see that we're in that hour and 20 minutes. Okay? All right, so good, good work ethic today. Good constructive uh, uh, batting. Make sure that the running between wickets is, uh, we, is we show good intent. And obviously, guys, uh, the, the boundary right as well as inner ring, that we understand what is our role in there as well. We, let's make it a good one today as well. Okay. So I caught up today with Mohamed Sunday. He actually, it's your first day here today, right? And um, you didn't actually expect this to happen. So I sort of caught him off guard, but you are the physiotherapist for the 
Western Province Blitz team. Are you excited for your new role? Uh, thanks. Forgot you were not Thanks. Okay, thanks. start again. Sorry, by you cut it in. You start by thanks, Tamir. Yeah. Thanks, Tamir. I'm very, very happy and pleased to be here with the, with the team in the professional sports setup. Um, yeah, it is my first day here, but it doesn't feel like anything new, anything, because I've worked in professional sports teams before. I've worked with uh, high school athletes, cricket players, rugby players. So being in the sports setup, it's really, really no first day experience, anything like that. So but saying that, give us a bit of your background. How did you get into this? You know, your career so far is everything that led you to this point. So obviously my career started by graduating my undergrad in 2014 at BWC honors, honors degree. And then from that, I specialized further in sports injuries and did my master's research in cricket, cricket injuries, specifically in adolescence. I was in 2018, 2022. So you must have the academic profile behind it firstly in what you think and what you're working with. And then, yeah, I started working in 2015 in the hospital and then moved into my private practice in 2016. My private practice grew and worked a lot in sports teams. So between my sports teams, my private practice, hospital work, you practice grew and your profile just grew and you got more experience through that and specializing more in the field of sport. And then, yeah, over time, things things come up, different work contracts, different work, work positions. And this came up now this year. I applied for it and I'm here today. <laughs> <laughs> and and the typical type of injuries that you deal with, especially with cricket players, where what is what is the most common types of injuries that you actually deal with? So the nice thing with cricket, as opposed to most other sports, is well, first of all, you're dealing with impact and non-impact injuries. I say that because in rugby you'll see a lot of impact and trauma yes. type injuries, so you can't really predict or prevent what's to come. I mean. In rugby, you think you can prevent the, you can prevent a shoulder injury, but a player takes a knock attack. It and so, with West cricket, you're dealing a lot with non-impact injuries. And non-impact injuries, you can prevent and predict and know what's going on. So, like in cricket, the most common injury that we will see is the hamstring and lower back in fast bowlers. Yeah. And those are common trends with batsmen getting the hamstring with the acceleration deceleration force. So you know how to structure injury prevention through that. So that's where you find cricket a bit more specialized because you have to be very nitty gritty and nail on your injury prevention for the non-impact injuries in cricket. Okay, that's a really uh, good answer and a, a very, um, you know, if I look at it, I was a hockey player growing up mm. and it's quite similar to the injuries that you get with cricket because lower back, lower back and over here. And so as you get older, you start getting that, you start feeling the hamstring and the lower back pain. Why wow, we need to prevent it now. You need to so... prevent it now. I should have had that advice so I needed to have someone like you during my career to obviously prevent it. Because as, as they are professional athletes, they're also humans at the end of the day, so you also have to prevent them for longevity as well. And you've had, you haven't had, we're actually here today to cover um, Salih Nakadin, the head coach. Um, you haven't had a lot of dealings with him um, in the past. This is the first day that you met him. Yeah. And what is your first impression of the man? Well, my first impression was at the interview. And <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's very stern, very strict, he knows what he wants. He asks the right questions, he demands um, results-based driven type coach from the interview I had with him and following the interview a few days later they called me that I was a successful applicant and ever since that Salik has been in contact with me um, telling me what's expected what needs to be done what's the schedule so very open transparent and communicates very well so from the get-go I could pick up that he's very results-based driven wants performance and success and knows what he wants and then following the interview I got to know that you know he's actually quite transparent very open and communicating with whoever he works with so that's actually what you want in a coach from a management point of view and from a player's point of view and today's my first interaction with him and yeah it's yeah i actually saw you guys because uh, i met you when i stopped and i saw you guys um well interacting for the first time yeah. and he's, he spoke as if he knew you for that's, for for years that's experience that's yeah. experience from salik yeah you can see so i've had a very good interaction with him and it's only been one week but it feels like we know each other already because we understand each other on that level in terms of what we want what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve and how we can work together. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Ahmed, and good luck with your new venture. Pleasure. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you. I can do a nice part of work tomorrow on this. I have different treatment devices I have to bring in for that. I need to treat for a ligament. I know it's a more rotate back against, yeah? How does it rotate the cuff? So, not happy. So, it's the external rotator cuff. You're then going to push against me. I know what I'm working with. So, that's why I can come to the office. Down step, down, down step. We'll give this this over. Let me just give a very quick release on this, okay? You keep the arm in that position. Yeah. 
that should be fine. Okay, I know what to do. Let me see. Okay. I'm here with Gavin Kaplan. I just saw him uh, take a few shots on the field. He's one of the batsmen here for the um, Blitz team. Kevin, welcome. You are leaving for the um, tournament next week. Um, how long have you been with the club or how long have you been with the Blitz? Yeah, so I've been with the Blitz for about a year now. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed the time here and uh, we're looking forward to, to hopefully another successful comp. Yeah, we leave on, as you said, Friday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're actually doing a segment today on the on your head coach, Salih Nakadin. Um, you said you only had a, you had about a, a year with him. Um, as a coach, as a mentor, uh, any any tips or any uh, feedback you can give on him as a person or as a coach? Yeah, I think Snake's brilliant. He's just a, an honest guy that um, that all the players can trust. Um, he's a great sounding board if guys need to talk about anything. So I think from that point of view, he really builds up um, a, a great name for himself. And because because guys can trust him, they'll go to him and, and chat to him about their games or um, their personal lives or, or things, whatever they're comfortable to do. So I think from that point of view, building that, that trust and a relationship with someone is, is that goes beyond just the cricket. And your prediction for the tournament? Uh, you guys think you're going to win it? <laughs> yeah, I think um, uh, we'll give it our best shot. Um, we've got a good side, a nice balanced team. Um, and I think I think we've got a good chance. Our prep has been good. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can carry that through. Thank you and good luck with the tournament. Thanks very okay. much. Cheers. Cool. Newlands is regarded as one of the most beautiful cricket grounds in the world, being overlooked by Table Mountain and Devil's Peak. It is close to Newlands Stadium, which is a rugby union and football venue. The cricket ground opened in 1988. Between 1991 and 1997, numerous changes were made to the ground. Large portions of the grass embankments were replaced by pavilions, increasing the seating capacity to 25,000. Growing up as a child in the 80s, if there's one name that I always heard my fathers and uncles say when it comes to cricket, especially in the Muslim community, it was Salih Nakarin. So the first time I picked up a cricket bat, I wanted to be Salih Nakarin. And for me to sit here today with you at, at this, uh, should I say, prestigious ground, it, it's quite an honor. Thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Let's start. Tell us a bit about how, how it started. How did Salih Nakarin, the, the kid, start playing cricket? I think it happened at the age of six, seven already, where my dad was a cricketer. He was a batsman, left-hand batsman. And we always like when he's not practicing at club level. He was always playing in the backyard with, with a stick or whatever. And, and he was normally throwing balls to me. So I, batting was my forte and I, I was always like, like to, 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 to bat. And as it went on, you know, you started to infiltrate into uh, junior, to your, your school, primary school. And there, uh, sort of, I've, my career started to take to take a bit of shape uh, with a bat, and then uh, starting but, to but, make. But did you always think you would be a professional cricket player at a young age, or was it more just picking up a bat, having some fun, and slowly you, you saw that you're talented and you, and you you probably end up playing um, professional cricket? I think it was always my um, my aim to to be a professional cricketer. Um, it was a question of how quickly it will uh, happen. And my patience towards that as well. So it wasn't it wasn't an easy period, but as uh, I said to myself, if I'm consistent in what I'm doing and, and work hard and prepare well, and really listen to my mentors, uh, I will get somewhere uh, with my cricket going forward. So take us a step back. You you said you started at a young age at six seven. Um, you obviously played for your school, and how did it actually blossom? Or how did it grow from there? Yeah, from there on we went obviously to to a young people's cricket club. Yeah. Uh, I've got a men I had a mentor there, Kali that uh, and, and uh, Mr. Khutam, that was the main key at all players back then um, uh, in, in my career. And But I also played my, my junior club at school for, for Ottomans uh, in Pal. Uh, yes. So I've had a custom there as well. And then we went to, to uh, young people's senior, senior cricket. And then I started uh, as a 12 man for, for the uh, for the A side, and I was very delighted to to, to have that that sort of opportunity just to be 12 man for your A side. At what age? I think I was I think I was 15. Wow. 
So for me, that was a big, a big uh, step uh, to just to be 12 men and be part of that 11 that's on the field and support them as much as possible. And from there, you started your first professional team with Boland, if I'm, if I'm, got yeah, it correctly. At, at school level, um, I've played three Nuffield weeks, um, and then I made SS schools in. And nine, where were you at high school? I was at the Polish Bay okay. High School. Yeah. And we played as a club, Young People's Cricket Club, in the Boland School. So then you were selected from that uh, structure to, yes. to play for Boland or were selected for Boland schools, your, your under 19 or under 18 um, Nuffield side. And after the under 18 Nuffield side, with, what was your first professional my side? First, my first professional, um, or it was still semi professional, amateur, uh, it was 1983. I made my first class debut for Boland uh, at Stellenbosch against Transvaal B. And you played. I think seven years at Poland, or eight years at Poland, or is it longer? I played, in total I played um, 13 years. Yeah. Um, maybe there was one year in 1988 that I didn't play, but I played uh, 13 years for first class cricket for Poland. I think that is a period that we, because in 1983 I was three years old, and when I started playing, or picked up cricket, we had at five, six, seven, that was your main years at Poland. And that's where the name Salih Nakarin obviously came into the fold of whoever we aspire to be like. Um, you played with Borland all the years, and you getting is it is was it just a natural transition getting into coaching, or is it just? I mean, most players they end their careers they either go on commentary or they go on coaching. So is it something that you would you aspire to be when you finish your career? No, I, while I was playing, I was still working at, at the company for 17 years. Wow. So you gotta you gotta balance uh, yes. the playing and the, the practices and, and and working. And it wasn't easy, yeah. but the, the passion for the game was so 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 much that you don't even bother what time you're getting at home at night. You know, so you might pitch up at uh, at home at about nine o'clock after all your your activities. But yeah, I think uh, from there on um, in '98, I started to do part-time coaching uh, for Bolan, uh, but I was still working, and then in 2000. I've been appointed to do the academy and the, the Bolan side at, at, at Bolan Cricket. You mentioned to me earlier that a lot of these uh, players actually were with you in 2010. 19 season. 19 season. Um, was it at the year at the... Yeah, I've been... I, I did my coaching for nine years at Bolan. Um, from 2000 to 2009, I applied for the job at Western Province in 2009. That was in April. So I got the job and then I started a three-year contract with uh, Western Prawns and then some of these guys that's currently here uh, that started their careers. So that was a, wow. that was a, a nice journey to, 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 to be with them as well, to start their careers and see how they went through and play for, for the Proteas uh, eventually. I mentioned a few names of the players that are currently in your squad that played for the Proteas. Yeah, Dane Patterson, uh, Bjorn Hendricks, um, uh, Dane Pitt that's now in America. Uh, that went on to play for the for the Proteas. Uh, currently, is Cal Verena's in here. So yeah, it's uh, uh, Yasin Valley that made SAA. Yeah. Uh, that's still playing. Uh, so it's all first-class cricketers uh, that that uh, excelled uh, over the last sort of ten years. That uh, that I started with. There's a lot of young cricketers out there because if you look at South African sports in general, would I would say that cricket is probably our third biggest sport. Or do I have it wrong? If you have to say rugby, soccer, cricket. Or is it soccer, rugby, cricket? Or is it cricket, soccer, rugby? Are you? Are you? <laughs> I think that cricket would probably be the second or third. It's it, definitely it's not a, our first. It's a difficult one. Yeah, I think obviously rugby, soccer, and then cricket. But it could be just the other way around as well. It could. Uh, cricket uh, and, and then soccer. But yeah, um, be as it may, in terms of the three, the codes, um, you know, it's for, for for this country. It's an honour to play for and to work in those structures uh, at, at the highest level, um, if, if it's now rugby, cricket or soccer. And if there's any advice you could give to the young kids who are obviously trying to break through or come through, what would it be? Well, I think for me it's quite simple. It's got to be purely patience and, and perseverance uh, in terms of what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Things are not just going to come um, easily. Uh, you've got to work hard. Uh, you've got to really um, um, Take ownership uh, in terms of your your work that you need want to do and where you want to go, and really make sure that you understand why you're there. You're there for the pur for the purpose, and if you want to make that a career uh, and you want to make money or get getting paid, you need to take that uh, sort of uh, um, um, ownership. Uh, That's good advice. I saw I saw how you 
interact with your players. And, um, you know, I've also come in from a bit of a sporting background and I dealt with a lot of coaches. You seem to have a very um, hands-on and also a um, mentoring type of approach with them. I see that all your players feel really comfortable around you as well. Is that just a natural trait of yourself or is it something that you had to learn over the years? I always say that is my way of doing things, to build the relationships. I think that is the biggest thing in, in sport, and especially when you um, um, you yeah. head up a, t a professional team or any team. you got to build that relationship first, uh, be approachable, understand not just what they need to come and do here, understand what's, what their life is all about, how are things going at home. And that interaction, your door is always open for them. If they can anytime, they can phone, you know, and that's the type of relationship I normally have with my players. And this is my way of doing things. I'm not saying that's the right way, but I think what I've done over the last sort of 22 years in coaching, uh, that, that is the way I've with dealing with players. And to be honest and open with players where they stand in, in, in the system. There's a saying that cricket players never really grow up because they're always they're having fun yeah. for a living. Is that something that is true? <laughs> yeah, I, will, I always say to players, uh, we, we, we're very fortunate in this uh, industry that you work basically, what, three and a half hours to four hours a day. There's other people working in, in, in offices nine till five. And here can you can live your dream here. You're outside, you, you practice at the best venues. You, you see the, the world, you see other places, uh, provinces every year uh, for maybe 12 years, for yes. how long your, your career um, will be, 15 years. So yeah, we're very privileged and I say, don't take it for granted. Make sure that you do the best every day when you come to work, you come with the right attitude, the right mindset and not and not just going through the motions, uh, but you got to enjoy it. That's the main thing. And juggling family life with all the traveling that comes with a job like this can't be easy. I must say, I must give credit to my wife. I think over the years when I was still playing and coaching now, it's, it's, it's a lot of sacrifices that she made and uh, the support that I've been given through with my family, my son, and my daughter-in-law. Uh, it's actually uh, very nice uh, from them, you know, for my, especially my wife, that, that uh, sacrificed her life a lot in terms of being alone at home. I'm seeing all the, the nice places yeah. and, you know, I was going overseas with the ladies, uh, the national team and so forth. So, but yeah, I must give credit to her for, 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 for the patience. You, you mentioned to me when I called you that we're gonna have some fun today as well, that I'm gonna actually pad up and we're gonna have one or two players uh, throw a, a ball or two at me. Yeah. Look, I was a hockey player at school and I was a rugby player, but I was never good at cricket. I don't have the patience for cricket. Yeah. I always felt that cricket was the one sport that you have to have a lot of patience. Yeah. So let me, let me get padded up and see how good I do with one of your guys bowling at yeah. me. Or are you gonna bowl, bowl to me yourself? We can, <laughs> we can ask somebody, way. but don't worry, we'll let, we'll let uh, have some fun. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks sir. So I'm here with Dieter, he's a strength and conditioning coach at the Blitz team. Tell me how long has you been in this role? Okay, so I've, right now I've, I've only been in it for a couple of months. Uh, I've just moved down from Pretoria, but I've been at Western Province for the last what, 12 years. Yeah. Uh, as an SNC and also as an assistant coach for a couple of years. When I saw you, I definitely knew that you had to do something with strength and conditioning. <laughs> because you, you don't have the form of one of these cricket guys, you more, but yeah. stronger than the rest of them. <laughs> Tell me, being with, being with um, Salih Nakhirin as a coach, yeah. um, you know, we, we're doing this episode around him and his career. Anything you can tell us about how it is to work with him? So, sure, well, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege, uh, to be honest. Uh, myself and Snakes, we come a long way. We started together. Why does everyone call him Snakes? Sure, that's his nickname. I actually don't know why they call him <laughs> yeah. Snakes. <but> the, <laughs> I should actually ask him. I came to know him as, as, yeah. as Snakes and as Oom. Uh, yes. But yeah, we've worked together from the very from the very start. You know, when we started with the Cobras. Yes. Uh, up until this uh, point, you know, and like, like, like I said to him and like he also says and refers to, our relationship also having gone full circle, you know, yes. because we started together and then we went in our different uh, directions and now we're back together. So I'm actually quite excited to, you know, to, to be working with him again. Yeah. Well, good luck for the season and Thanks. you can continue with your session. No worries. Thanks.
hand-eye coordination and batting technique is arguably one of the most important facets of the game of cricket, as is to possess strong hand-eye coordination and batting technique. Playing cricket in South Africa is a strenuous job and athletes need to perform at a peak level with an unrelenting schedule and few rest days. Professional cricket is a tough and competitive career. Only a few talented individuals become professionals and fewer still make their mark as a top international player. So I'm here with Abdullah Biyomi. Did I pronounce it properly? Yeah. Abdullah is currently, or just played with under 19 SA squad. Yeah. Okay, and tell me, which club do you play for in general? I play for Ryland's Cricket Club. Ryland's Cricket Club. Yeah. And um, what was the experience, or how did it feel like to be chosen in the SA under 19 team? Obviously a great achievement for me. Um, after working so hard for the last couple of years. And I think it's just a great experience, great exposure. And are you a bowler or batsman? I'm an all-rounder. Okay, so you're going to take it easy on me, yeah. okay? I'm not really a cricket player, so please take it easy on me. I'm going to take some shots. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> that was great fun. I'm not going to lie, cricket is not one of my favorite sports, but I love having a bat in my hand. And um, I don't think it's something that I will take up again, but maybe for fun, I'll have a laugh. Abdullah, how do you rate my performance? Yeah, hey? Then I no, 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 be serious. No. How do you rate my performance? Good, high elbow, nice. High elbow? It's good. Anything I should work on? Don't miss the push shot. Don't miss her. The pull shot. The pull shot. <laughs> Thanks, Abdullah. You've been a sport and all the best for the future with your career. I want to ask you something. You've been here now with Salik Nakarim. Yeah. And um, a lot of the players are saying that he's such a good coach and such a good mentor. Yeah. How did it feel to you, obviously, to work with this man? Uh, obviously, it was new to me and I actually like it because I'm a very quiet person. But he, he made like everyone welcome me. He made me, he made jokes, made me smile. This made me feel welcome and I think it's a great coach, to be honest. Okay, so from my side, 
This was probably an experience that I'm never gonna forget, being out here on Newlands. It's not often that anyone gets to be on this hallowed pitch and you guys should actually appreciate being here. So I'm really happy that I had this opportunity to be here today and I hope that our viewers enjoyed our show. In next week's episode, we spend some time at the residence of ex-non-racial cyber rugby player Richard Tariq Britton and his wife Kay. We meet up with ex-Western Province rugby hardman Aslam Tofi. We listen to these old friends share some stories about their playing days during the apartheid rugby isolation years. Thank you for watching this episode of Prime Culture. Tune in next week, same time, same place.